Hey everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Microbiology. I'm Professor Bob Long. You are not going to be seeing my face in this video. I'm way down here, but I'm waving at you. Um, because of the way this room is set up and my camera, in order for you to see what I want you to see from the projected screen, you're not going to be able to see me. The purpose of this video is to go over the course syllabus and the exam schedule and some of the information that's going to be um, contained in this classroom. So, or in this class. Now, this class is being taught as a hybrid course. So there is a, an online component, which is in lecture. And then there's a face-to-face -face component, which is in lab. And I will also be going over some of the materials and things in lab so that you can see them. So, in order for you to get this information, you guys need to go to your favorite browser. Go to www.delmar.edu, or what I've done is got a link to it here. You'll go to the Canvas button, and you'll log into Canvas. I have a video that you should have previously watched on how to navigate Canvas. So please, if you have not watched um, how to navigate Canvas for my class, you need to do so. Excuse me while I type this in. Now, once you're in Canvas, you'll see the courses that you have told Canvas to put on your dashboard, this screen is called the dashboard. Um, you do not see my microbiology class for two reasons. One, it's not published, and two, I haven't told Canvas to show it up here. Actually, I have, but it's in my unpublished section, okay? So I'm gonna go into my developmental shell for microbiology. This is where I'm building it, and then all of this will be published for students to see in the future. My homepage gives you a welcome to my class. There's also a video that talks a little bit about me and my credentials, so you should watch that. <clears throat> really what I wanna go over is a couple of things. I'm gonna start with the syllabus. If I click on this, it will download the syllabus for us, or you can download it to your computer so that you can print it. Now it's taken a little bit of time. Let's hope this works properly. Come on now. And essentially the syllabus is going to be the rules and regulations for this class, the required materials, all how do, how do I determine your grade, how many exams are there in lecture and lab, and all of that good stuff, okay? Now, let me see, I'm gonna close this. Let me see if I can download the syllabus and see if it works. Let's see if that works better. Yes, all right. So, you can print this for class if you would like to, and so, um, it, it introduces the class. It's Biology 2420, Microbiology for the Allied Health Sciences. Those are those sciences that support doctors in their jobs in hospitals, like nurses, OTA, PTA, respiratory therapy, all those majors. It lists my information, Professor Bob Long, my email address, and my office phone number. So if you need to reach me, you can always email me. The course description, we're going to be looking at microbes or little bugs that are too too small to be seen with the eye. And I say bugs because that's a generic term used in microbiology for some of the germs that we look at. But that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be talking about microbes or microorganisms, um, how to classify them, what do they look like, what different types there are, which ones cause diseases, which ones are good for our body and all of that. Um, the prerequisites for this course are the classes that you have to have. You have to have chemistry before you take this. The learning outcomes, these are, these are required by the state um, of Texas that they be in our syllabus, and these are according to the um, ACGM guide uh, that tells us which, what the learning outcomes should be for lecture and lab. If you have any technical issues, you can always, with Canvas or Respondus, the webcam, you can always go to the Viking Help Desk or call them there. These are their hours of operation. Um, this course is being conducted as a hybrid course. The lectures are on, online via Canvas, and the labs are in person on our campus. So I will see you face to face in lab, okay? The required materials. You must have a webcam and a microphone on your computer in order to do this class. And the reason is, and you have to have a reliable internet connection. If you do not, it will be very difficult on you. You're going to have to download Respondus Monitor and the Lockdown Browser so that you guys, that does not work on phones, so you cannot take your test, test on, on a cell phone or on Android-based tablets. So, 
Respondus Monitor and Lockdown Browser lock you into the web browser so that you cannot be looking up answers while you're taking a test. And the monitor videotapes you while you're taking the exam. So I can see your face. There's facial recognition technology. You'll have to do a, an environmental check and so that you uh, turn your camera around and show me the environment. I need to make sure you don't have any other cell phones or tablets or books or notes and that you're cheating. I do watch the videos. It will flag your video if you look away or look down or you're looking at other things. I can also hear if you're typing or chewing gum. So don't do anything to cheat because it will warn me. I go look at the video and if you're cheating, you get a zero and or could be dropped from the class, okay? You're gonna need Windows 10, eight or seven. Uh, for Macs, that's what you need and all this other stuff. And again, it reiterates here. You will be required to take exams through Lockdown Browser and Respondus Monitor using a webcam. You must have the equipment or you cannot take the tests. During the exams, it will record each of you taking your test. Please dress appropriately. I don't want to see things I'm not supposed to see. Make sure that um, you have most of your distractions out of the way. Now, if you're taking your exam and someone walks in and says something and you turn your face and go, hey, I'm taking a test, I'm not going to give you a zero. Things are going to happen. I've had students who's uh, in the middle of the test, their computer tells them it's about to die on their battery, and they're like, oh no, Mr. Long, I gotta go get my plug. They run to the other room, they run back in less than a minute, and that's okay. But if you leave the room, I don't know if you're looking stuff up or not. So it'll be obvious to me when you're cheating or when you're doing the right thing. Just shoot me an email if any issues pop up, and I'll, I'll make sure to take note of it, okay? Um, Anyone who gets caught taking pictures of the exam or having a cell phone out will get a zero, okay? And you might be punished for academic dishonesty and dismissed from the class. For the class, you're gonna need a textbook. The textbook is called Microbiology, an Introduction to Microbiology by Gerard Tortora, by Funk and Case. It's the 13th edition. Personally, I don't care if you use the 12th edition, the 11th edition, the second edition, or any edition. The newer the edition, the better, but I was very, very financially strapped as a student. I didn't have any money, so I used old editions and I made A's. I graduated with honors. So if you can find the used edition, uh, the 12th edition or something, buy it, and it has the same information. Now one issue with that, by the way, is when I make reference in lecture or in the notes to a page number, they're gonna be for the 13th edition. If you have the 12th edition, it'll be a page or two off, but if you know how to use an index, you can find the information. You're going to need some lecture notes. The ones I'm using this semester are the ones that Dr. Doyungan has written for his class, because again, I haven't taught micro in quite some time, and I'm currently writing my notes. I will also post some of my notes within the Canvas modules, so um, whenever they're differing from his, I'll post that information. You're going to need the laboratory manual, which is called Microbiology Laboratory Theory and Application. We have a customized edition for Del Mar College, so it only has those lab exercises that we're doing, which saves you some money. We also have a laboratory exercises worksheet. It's a, it's a little booklet. It's very inexpensive, but it has all the lab exercises where, where you will take notes, where you will answer questions, and some information for you to turn in each week with your lab. So please buy that at the Del Mar Bookstore. You'll need a lab coat, and actually we provide the lab coats, so don't worry about that. You will need some splash goggles. We do have some in lab, but if you wanna buy your own, I respect that, that's a good idea. And then you're gonna use face masks. Um, some labs, I'm going to require face masks, not because of COVID, but because the material that we're playing with requires that you protect yourself and not breathe this stuff in. So have a face mask on you always. I highly recommend that you wear a face mask for the prevention of the spread of COVID because it is aerosolized in droplets as people exhale and can be spread that way and people can inhale it from someone else. So I know there's a lot of conflicting information and I know there's a lot of politics about this stuff, but masks do help. They're not a perfect prevention from spreading the droplets but they do help a, a great deal. So if you can, wear them in my class, please. And there are class periods where it will be required because the type of assignment that we are doing, okay? Um, 
Students' responsibilities, you need to read all of the introductory and orientation material before coming to class. Um, also, each week, you'll need to do your lab exercises, your pre-reading. Um, make sure you have all the software. Make sure you uh, complete all your required assignments and course on time. Contact me in a timely fashion. If your exam is due on Thursday, you can't call me on Monday and say, hey, I need help, man. No, it's too late. You better contact me within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, academic dishonesty in the student code of conduct. Um, this is all according to the catalog for Delmore College. Anyone who gets caught taking pictures of exams or trying to cheat on quizzes or sharing answers with others can be pro um, prosecuted for academic dishonesty. The easy way for us to do it is you get a zero for that assignment or that quiz. If you really want to fight it, then I'll just have you dropped from the class. And if you get dropped from the class and kicked out of the college, then you will not be allowed at the most programs that require um, or that are for health science programs. If you want to drop from the course or withdraw from the course because you're not doing well, this tells you how to do it. You can also come to me and talk to me before you do that. Grades and testing. Any quizzes or exams for lecture will be taken online. Lab quizzes and exams can be taken in lab. Um, you will need lockdown browser and a webcam and a microphone and do it this way. The breakdown is this way. Lecture comprises 65% of your class, okay? So your grade, 65% of your grade is gonna come from collect lecture. And that's gonna involve three things. There are five lecture tests. They represent 50% of this 35, or about 32 and a half points, a percentage of your class. So there'll be five major lecture exams and they're a big chunk of your lecture score. There are chapter quizzes. The chapter quizzes are quizzes that I will post every week or every two weeks over a particular chapter. They will be based on the lectures that I deliver and the material in the textbook. Um, and those are you know, pretty straightforward, pretty easy, short quizzes. And then there will be a final exam, which will be 30% of your lecture grade. So of your total grade, which is 100%, 65% of it will come from these things, and this will be the breakdown. I have it weighted in Canvas so that you always know what your grade is every time you complete an assignment. Your final exam, by the way, is comprehensive. It will cover all five lecture tests. The laboratory component of this course comprises 35% of your grade. So it's a pretty significant chunk. One third of your grade or a little bit more of it comes from lab. Every week there will be a pre-lab safety and exercise quiz. Um, we have eight labs that we're going to do. And so before you come to lab, you need to read some material. You need to watch the video on the pre-lab information and you need to know what the safety hazards are. There will be a little 10 question quiz that you answer multiple choice and I will grade those and enter that into your grade. They make up 25% of your lab grade. There will be eight lab exercise worksheets. These are um, lab exercises that you fill in the information while you're in lab from the observations that you make and the work that you do. That will be 25% of your lab grade. And then there are two major lab exams based on all of those exercises. So essentially we're gonna do four major exercises. Some of the exercises will be done in one week. Some may require two weeks. We might do something one time and observe it. The exams will be based on that. After your first four lab um, exercises are completed, we'll take a major lab exam and then we'll do four more major lab exercises and take another major lab exam. Your grade will be determined that way. I discuss how exams will be delivered here. Um, there's five lecture exams taken online. Um, they're timed. They are uh, multiple choice mostly. And uh, you're not allowed to use notes, textbooks, a cell phone or other reference materials. And I do check the webcam results. The chapter quizzes, there will be between somewhere between 10 and 20. I may not have one on every chapter, um, but there's chapter quizzes that go over the chapters that are an easy way for you to get some points. All of the chapter quizzes, by the way, do not require respondents monitor. So you can look at your notes or look stuff up in the chapter, and they will be timed, so you can, can run out of time. And then the final exam will be taken online based on all your other exams. Your pre-lab quizzes, I discuss them there. They are always going to be in the first 10 to 15 minutes of lab, so please do not be late. Um, the laboratory exercises, there's one for major lab, and you'll turn those in each week. 
Actually, what you can do is either take a picture or scan them on your cell phone and submit them electronically, and I will review them, and then there's major laboratory exams. I may offer some extra credit, like the introductory syllabus quiz is free points. At the end of the semester, if you have, when you combine all of those grades from lecture and lab, if your percentage is 90% or greater, you get an A. From 80 to 89 is a B, 70 to 79% is a C, 60 to 69 is a D, and so on. We have some disability accommodations for students that have disabilities and require any special accommodation. Um, there's an office where you can submit this, and the numbers are listed here, and there's some other emergency numbers, okay? Now, sometimes I have students that have either hearing or visual disabilities. In lab, you are gonna randomly draw your seat and you sit in the same seat in lab every single time you come in. If there's anyone who gets a, lab, a seat at the back of the lab that needs to sit at the front and has a letter that's registered with the Office of Disability Services um, or Disability Services Office, our DSO, um, then I can make special accommodations for that student. Lab safety. Lab safety is big in microbiology, okay? I teach anatomy and physiology and I'm pretty laid back in that class because we don't have any harmful substances. In microbiology, the things we're touching are microbes, they are germs, some of them can make you sick. We will absolutely, under no circumstances, have food or drinks or gum in the lab. You're going to be wearing a mask, hopefully to prevent, help prevent the spread of COVID, and I know some people say masks don't work, but they do provide some preventative measure, I know for a fact. Um, so please, if you can, wear a mask. And some labs we will require them because the materials that we'll be playing with. Some of these things can get you sick. If we're trying to streak a plate with E. coli, E. coli causes diarrhea. It can make you really sick. It can make you vomit, and you don't want to get it. So lab safety is of a major importance. There will be a lab safety um, quiz that you have to take online. I talk about it when we do the Canvas orientation, and it's due on or before September 6th, which is the second week of class, okay? Every week, there are some general, uh, by the way, there's some general Del Mar College safety policies. I assign a seat to a student so that I can keep track of you. Um, all of this is recommended by the American Society for Microbiology. Things like don't place your books or backpacks on bench tops, so we will have a cubby for you to put your stuff in. The only thing you need on your bench top is your um, lab exercises. We will provide pens and pencils so that you don't get germs all over your pens and pencils. Stick them in your back backpack and take them out. So you don't even need pens or pencils. We, have, we provide them in lab. All your electronic, electronic devices will be put away, so no cell phones or calculators. You will always clean and disinfect your work area before and after each lab. Wash your hands before and after each lab, especially after. Wear your protective equipment. You will wear a lab coat in class every time. They will be placed in a location where you know where yours is and your name will be on it. Um, we provide them. You must wear closed-toed shoes. You have to cover your body. So no wearing flip-flops or sandals. If you don't have them on, you're not allowed in class. You will be wear, wearing gloves most of the time and goggles when they're necessary. Um, do not place anything in your mouth, touch your eyes or face while you're in lab, okay? This includes pencils, foods, fingers, anything. Keep it away from your face and mouth. No food, no drinks, no gum, no chapstick, nothing touching your face, okay? Not allowed in lab. You're not gonna take anything out of the lab, no bacterial cultures, none of the stuff that we're growing in lab. Um, don't place anything that's contaminated or in any locations that they don't go. Um, if you do spill something, please let us know. You will always have a location for your cultures, for your racks, for your, I mean a rack for your cultured um, petri dishes and test tubes and things. Um, if you are immune comp compromised or might become pregnant or you know you're pregnant, um, then you should let me know so that we can make some accommodations if necessary. There's some other lab policies. You um, need to social distance properly, at least while we're in the COVID restrictions. Um, you're expected to complete and take all your lab quizzes in the online lab safety training. Go over the PowerPoint videos or the lecture videos on lab safety. Uh, you must submit your lab worksheets when they are due. I will deduct points if anything's late. 
And complying with these standards is an absolute must because there are safety hazards in the microbiology lab. You will learn how to use instrumentation properly and pay attention. And there will be a form for you to sign saying that you've gone over these safety guidelines with me in lab and that I've pointed all this out, okay? I have an addendum to my course syllabus, most of us do. Right now we're under phase three conditions to return to campus, which requires still social distancing and highly encourage of wearing masks. Um, and the course is being offered as a hybrid because we're in the situation, all right? So that's the syllabus. That's the testing, uh, the tests, um, how they're gonna be conducted, how your grade will be determined. I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna open up the exam schedule. Let's see if it opens this way. Ah, that was much faster. My information is listed here. My office hours are Monday from 2 to 3.30, Tuesday from 12 to 1, Wednesday from 2 to 3.30, Thursday from 3 to 4. This is based on my class schedule. And Fridays are by appointment. My office is in the Coles Building on Del Mar College's East Campus, or now called the Heritage Campus, in room 342, or we could always meet online. If you want to meet online, shoot me an email or if those office if i'm in my office on those days which i will be you can just pop in if you want okay i highly prefer that you make an appointment because if another student is in my office and you show up and they take the full hour and i have to leave you don't get to see me so it's best if you always make an appointment if you're going to come see me face to face or you can request an online meeting via zoom and we can set up a time outside of those hours okay Lecture topics, there's three parts to this class, so to speak. In part one, we're gonna do some fundamentals of microbiology. So for your lecture test, the first lecture will involve several chapters and they will be extended out over a few weeks. And then you'll take lecture one test on Monday, September 20th. We're gonna be going over chapter one, two, three, and four in the book, and you'll watch my videos on that. Lecture two will involve chapters five, six, and seven. You can see what's there. There's the date of the exam. For lecture three, we're gonna finish up part one, which will be microbial genetics and biotechnology. Part two of the class is gonna be a survey of the microbial world. And so we'll go over prokaryotes, eukaryotes, and viruses. And we're gonna go um, take a test on November 1st for that. Then we have part three, which is how do microbes interact with the host? And we're gonna talk about the principles of disease, pathogenicity, uh, the immune system and how do we fight all of this, how do we fight infections, viruses and bacterial infections and other things. You'll take an exam four on the 22nd of November and exam five on December 8th. And then your final exam will be cover all the lecture sections. It's on Monday, December 13th. And then for laboratory, here's all the exercises we're going to be doing. I don't have dates because some labs will last more than one lab period. So please bring the laboratory exercise worksheets to lab with you each time you show up. On lab one, the first day, we're gonna have an introduction to lab safety. On lab two, we're gonna start using the microscope and you can see all the things that we're going to cover. Each lab beyond the first one will have a pre-lab quiz, which will involve safety and what we're doing for that exercise. After we do these four labs, you're going to take a major lab exam that will be in the laboratory. We will, I will tell you how the exam will be conducted, but you will be demonstrating some techniques and answering questions on some things that you see. Then we'll do four more labs, and then we're gonna take another lab, laboratory exam, okay? There is no final for the laboratory. So I hope all this information has been helpful to you. I hope that you at least have some idea of what's gonna be happening in the class, and I hope you had as much fun as I did I can't wait to see you in lab. Thanks for watching.